Good afternoon. It's Pastor Jason here, Pleasant Baptist Church. I certainly appreciate you tuning in and getting yourself prepared and ready uh, to study uh, the Word of God as we get into our prayer meeting this afternoon and our Bible study. Uh, I trust that you finding your Bibles. You're, I, pray, I figure most of you done eat dinner by now. Uh, maybe you've gotten home, got settled down, eat dinner, and, or maybe it's later on. I'm not really sure, but either way, I appreciate you tuning in. Uh, find your place in the Word of God in the book of Revelation, the 16th chapter. Uh, many here at Pleasant Home today got a call out, if not all did. Uh, Brother Hall Anderson has failed. <clears throat> As he was coming down the ladder, my understanding, uh, broken his arm, so you pray for him. The family called um, about the middle of the day or maybe a little earlier than that. And they had taken him to the hospital and they wasn't allowed to go in. They had to drop him off and go back and get him. So you pray for him. Uh, as far as I know, all is well except for the arm. So you pray for uh, Brother Hall as he heals up this afternoon. Uh, spoken to some others in the church. Had some ailments and some things, but all in all, everyone is doing good. Uh, praise the Lord for that. Brother Bill's still continuing to heal, and uh, he's done well with his. So you just pray for one another. Let's pray for our nation. Let's pray for our churches. And... Uh, I tell you, the churches I fear is is going to be somewhat like the reco well, uh, recovery in general. A lot of times it takes a while. So I want to pray for our churches today. Pray for the pastors and the preachers that's continuing having to stand in front of these uh, computers or being taped uh, either way they're by themselves. So we pray for them. Uh, pray for us tonight. Uh, pray for me as we'll get started here in Revelation the 16th chapter. Well, let's go to the Lord in prayer before we do that. Father, we just come to you, God, and Lord, we want to say we love you. Lord, you're good to us. God, you, you bless us beyond measure. And Father, that that we don't even know about. God, you've blessed us. We have protected us. You lead God and direct us. Father, I thank you for that. Now, God, I pray for your uh, anointing here this afternoon. I pray for a, uh, a spirit of teaching. I pray for a gift of preaching. Lord, a gift of teaching tonight, God, as we open up your word. Lord, just give us that that we've studied today. Give it back to us. God, we'll thank you and praise you for it. We pray for all uh, the many here at church with different things going on in our lives. We pray for healing and bill. And, uh, God, just the many, uh, Lord, that need a touch from you. God, we pray for them. We pray for our nation. We pray for this virus, God, that you'll uh, lift it and take it away. God, just do that. We pray that you would. Uh, we pray for a nation in repentance, God, because we know that truly... Uh, God, you'd take it away. I believe you would. And just uh, almost instantly, God, your word said you would. Uh, God, help us help our nation. God, as a whole, uh, God, to turn to you, turn to Christ. Lord, we love you. Forgive us for our sins and our mistakes. Bless this time together. We ask it all in Christ's name. Amen. All right. Revelation, the 16th chapter. A good while. We just continue to go on and on. It's been, been a big project. I know here at Pleasant Home, as we went through this now, we're uh, well, let's see, I believe uh, November of last year was a year, so we're about a year and a half in, and uh, probably another year or so to go, uh, but either way, we'll get it done with the help of the Lord. Some chapters go quick, and uh, some you just get a verse or two, and last week I think we got through two, about two and a half, maybe three verses, but we're going to go back over them this week very quickly. We want to take about uh, three or four minutes just to review those three <clears throat> verses in the 16th chapter of Revelation, the first three verses, and then we'll get on uh, as we look at possibly the third, fourth, and maybe the fifth vial. I doubt it, but we'll look at the third and the fourth uh, judgment that God is doing here. Now, Revelation, the 16th chapter, and we see here in verse, verse number one, the Bible says, and I heard a great voice out of heaven saying to the seven angels, go your ways and pour out the vials of the wrath of of God upon the earth. I believe this is Christ speaking here, uh, giving the, actually just passing the orders orders along to these angels as God has uh, has given order. Uh, God has given a command for these things to happen here. Christ speaking here. And then he goes over into verse number two. John does here and uh, continues to write. And the first went, the first angel, and poured out his vial upon the earth. And there fell a no noisome and grievous sore upon the men which had the mark of the beast, and upon them which worshipped his 
image. Now, chapter in chapter number 14, Christ had already told him, God had already spoken. As a matter of fact, angels had spoken directly. Uh, you can remember in chapter uh, 14 and verse 9, the Bible says, And the third angel followed them, saved with a loud voice. If any man worship the beast and his image and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God. So they've done been told, do not do this. And again, these are very supernatural times, folks. These are things that we have never saw uh, in history before where uh, it what appears to be taking place here as angels as they are flying in the heavens in the sight of men and they're preaching the gospel, telling them to give God the glory, uh, telling of judgment to come, these things that will take place and happen if they do these things. But yet man continues in their own pride and in their own desires, their own will. They continue to go forward uh, in this, but they take on this mark of the beast. And finally, uh, what we see here is God living up to his word. And we know that God's word will never fail. Uh, there will never be a, a period missed a, 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 or an eye dotted, however it is they say that. Uh, but God will not miss nothing and God's word will not fail and God will do that that he said he would do. We ought to say amen to that uh, because there's promises to us as Christians uh, that we wouldn't want God to let us down upon. So uh, in the good and the bad, there is things or all of God's word will be fulfilled and God will not miss a thing. So we see man here as they have received this blistering boil, if you will, as the Old Testament talks about it. You remember we talked about it in Exodus, we looked at it in Deuteronomy, that they talk, they talk about these things, Moses was talking about it, uh, that these things that will come upon man for the, for the disobedience uh, to God, and again, this is a direct disobedience, and I believe they know the reason it's going on, and I'll look at that more here in just a moment, I believe they know exactly why, they're, why this judgment is upon them, but yet they're not willing to or even wanting to uh, turn uh, in repentance. Uh, all right, so we see in, in verse number two, we see this blistering ball, this noisome sore, grievous sore that comes upon me and it took that mark and God said it was gonna happen and God's delivering on his promises. And in verse number two in the second angel, and we looked at all these last week, but let's look at them just a moment. And, and you know something I wanna say, and I know I said it last week, but uh, I believe it's worth saying again. Everyone in the tribulation is in a horrible, horrible position. Uh, you think of those, you're either with the devil or you're running from the devil. Okay, that's, uh, that's what's going on. You're either with the devil, you're following the devil, you've taken that mark, you've taken the, uh, the mark of the beast, that sign upon your flesh, or you're running from him. You're running to, uh, you're starving. If you didn't take the mark, you couldn't buy, sell, or trade. So it's a horrible position, horrible position to be in. So you're either with the devil or you're running from the devil. Uh, that's 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 the way it is. But, but yeah, we got so many to say today. Well, I'll get saved maybe if this happens, if this comes to pass, then I'll believe it. Well, we don't want to get into that, but no, you won't. Uh, and. Well, it's, it's, it's a sad position. It really is. So so everyone's in a terrible, terrible, terrible condition here. In verse number three, and the Bible says, And the second angel poured out his vial upon the sea, and it became as the blood of dead men, and every living soul in the sea died. Now, it appears to what is taking place here, uh, certainly it's all turned to blood. Now, we know that the second trumpet that was blew a third part of the seas was turned to blood, if we remember. We can turn over, I believe it's chapter seven or eight, talking about the trumpet judgments. But but then a third part was, but finally the entire sea, all the uh, oceans of the world is turned to the blood of men. Now you can imagine just for a moment, uh, we all know that through, uh, through our education, through high school and elementary school, that the ocean is a, is a filtering point for all of the, uh, even, the, even for the air, it's, it cleans the air, it cleans the water as we, as, as our rivers flow back into, it's a constant recycling. So this is not being able to take place anymore. Uh, that that we had is as salt water, 
a purifier is now turned to blood. And then not only that, think of this, as it, it has killed all the living creatures, everything that was in the sea. And you could imagine after just a few days, the horrible stench uh, that would that would uh, really encase the entire world as these, these, even from the small fish to the greatest, all living things uh, would, would float to the top and be, uh, well, just be a sad, sad day. Very sad day uh, that's coming. So we've seen the first two. We we just just highlighted those as we as that that we looked at last week. We want to try to cover two more tonight, and maybe even three, but definitely want to look at two. All right. Look in verse number four. And the third angel poured out his vial upon the rivers and fountains of water, and they became blood. So he got the seas, he got the oceans now, but now he's getting all fresh water. Uh, so, so well, we know this. We know that men can't, what is it, three days? Uh, maybe it's three minutes without oxygen. Uh, three days, maybe, without water. Uh, I can't remember. Three weeks without food. Uh, maybe got the threes there. Uh, so you can imagine what the condition this earth will be in after just a, a couple of three days. Uh, when all of the fresh water is dry, is, uh, is turned to blood. It says here, the river's and the fountains of water, in other words, those springs, those natural springs, all the natural water, all we can, all the water in the entire world is turned to blood. It's unable to, um, uh, unable to drink uh, anymore. And look in verse number five, and I heard the angel of the waters. Now I want to point out something here. We see here that angels has got some duties here. Now we know angels works all through the entire book of Revelation. Not only that, our angels are working today, and I believe it's very, uh, certainly very obvious in Revela Revelation that the angels will have a, a certain duties that they will perform, and, and some, sometimes I wonder if they're not uh, certainly performing those today. We see the angels in the wind, uh, those four angels that held the winds. It seems to be that they're angels even now. Uh, I use the word guardian angel very loosely, uh, but that's the only, maybe they're uh, their their area, their part of nature, whatever it may be that they're guarding. Uh, but we certainly see these angels, uh, the four winds, as they have held the winds back. But now we see God's uh, 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 water director here, if you will. And I heard it says in verse number five, and I heard the angel of the waters say. Now it seems to be there that, that God has, uh, angels even today are guarding uh, maybe our winds, our, our waters, our uh, all these these natural things that we that we enjoy today that God has blessed us with, and it and it's probably true because listen to me, folks. Listen, there's so much supernatural things that's going on around about us that we don't even understand, and our mind can't even get a hold of uh, that God is protecting and doing for you and I today. And because uh, trust me, if if the, if Satan could ruin our water system today he would certainly do it if satan could uh, all these well just many things that we could sit here and think of that satan if satan could bring uh, uh his own wrath uh, upon earth he would certainly do that today there's no doubt of that not about that in my mind of what i read of the scriptures uh that satan would do that so uh i believe it's rightful to say and rightful to think here that even today as we are as i stand here today that god has it has his angels uh, guardian angels, again, very loosely, that's the only way I know how to use that, over the waters and the winds and the seas and all these things that God, God has ones that's in charge of those things. But we see here, and I heard the angel of the waters say, Thou art righteous, O Lord, which art and wast and shall be, because thou hast judged thus. Now, remember in verse 8 of the 15th chapter, God went into the temple and it, it was as if he just shut the door. I believe, again, God is grieving here. And sometimes I, with that mindset in mind, I think, well, maybe the, maybe the angels are seeing that grieving and they're encouraging God here. That what, we're doing, what you're doing is right. It's just, uh, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. That's just a little bit of me, but I, I believe that's maybe what I'm seeing here. Uh, but in verse number six, it goes on. For they have shed the blood of saints and prophets, and thou hast given them blood to drink, for they are worthy. Now, what's he talking about here? He's talking about martyrs. 
Literally, he's talking about those that have shed innocent blood. Now, we know God know we know that God says that he hates those. Matter of fact, Proverbs chapter number 6. Let me get turned over here. Proverbs, the 6th chapter. You're going to see in the 16th verse. The Bible says, And these things doeth the Lord hate. Yea, seven are an abomination. In other words, he, these things that are abomination are just disgusting. These things that just turn the stomach of God. Let's read over these real quick. That uh, It begins out in verse 17. A proud look. Now that word proud just literally means, be, means to be raised high. Or people who deny God's own authority. Now folks, we live in a nation that's full of those people today. They deny the authority of God, the power of God, the very existence of God. They want to uh, uh, live above uh, they want to live above God. Uh, we see that attitude today uh, throughout all our nation, and certainly, well, just all the world in general. But he says in verse 17, a proud look, a lying tongue, and hands. Now, all six of these are things that we can do with our own body. These are things that we that we are most compelled, it seems to be, in our everyday walk of life. To uh, Now, think about it. You read through these, a proud look, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, Heart that devises wicked imagination, feet that, sw that are swift and running to mischief, a false witness that speaks lies. These are all, all these are, are almost daily happenings or daily things that we run into. Maybe not all of them, certainly not, probably not all of them, but, but we deal with these daily. And really it's dealing with how man treats one another. If you look at this, a proud look, a lying tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood. So what were they doing here? Why are these people dying? Why is judgment coming upon these people? Because they shed innocent blood. And friend, listen to me. The darkest day in America uh, was not the day that, that prayer was kicked out of school, even though it was certainly bad, and I believe we're paying for it today. Uh, it wasn't when God was kicked out of government. But friend, it was when in 1973, the darkest day in America, when what I want to call the devil's deacon board approved the killing of unborn children. Now, friend, there's a payment to be made for that, and and it's God. God will not. There will no sin. No sin will go unanswered. And I'm telling you, the the saddest day, the worst day in America, happened in 1973, when they said it was all right to murder children, when God said, "I hate it." Now, these people over here was innocent as well. They was giving their life for their testimony in Christ. They was giving their life. So so God says, I hate, I hate this hand that shed innocent blood. Over here in Revelation 14, he's carrying out that judgment, that sentence upon man for doing it. But it goes on here in verse number 18. And heart that devises wicked imagination. Those that just sit around and they stir up. They, they think about ways to... The shaft and to uh, uh, to stick it to people, uh, maybe for lack of better words, maybe I should call it better words than that. But either way, uh, that's what he's talking out here. Uh, feet that be swift in running to the mischief. Verse nineteen: A false witness that speaketh lies. But he said this last one here, and he that soweth discord among the brethren. God says that turns my stomach. That's an abomination to me. God says because listen, I tell you why. Satan would rather sell or would rather start a church argument, a fuss in church, than to sell all the pick, all the pills and the liquor that the world has and has ever had. Satan would rather start an argument in a church than to do that because he can cause more damage with that. And when he gets inside the church and begins to... So we need to be careful. I've seen a lot of people think they was justified in there. Maybe they thought they was taking the situation into their own hands. But friend, I'm telling you, for all those that will sit around and talk about their deacons and their, or the pastor or their church member, remember God said, that turns my stomach. God said, I hate that. And friend, there's a price to pay for those that will sow discord among the brethren. God said, I hate those things. So these people here, 
these people here were shedding innocent blood. And God said, I hate it. And there's a price to pay for that. And we see that here. For they have shed the blood of saints and prophets. And thou hast given them blood to drink. Now we know the Bible says an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. God says you want to shed blood. Now you're going to have to drink it. Now you're going to have to uh, deal with it day in. And we certainly can't live. They're not going to be able to live like that and, and drink this this uh, contaminated blood water, uh, if you will. But in verse number 7, and the Bible says, And I heard another out of the altar. Now I think about this just for a minute. Now, I'm not sure where it is. Probably going to have to go back over to about the uh, ninth chapter maybe. Those souls that was under the altar. Uh, you can remember those those souls. How long? How long will we be? How long will it be before you judge what these people has done to us? So it just says, and I heard another. Now we're not sure who that another is. I, I don't. I don't know. But either way, it says, and I heard another out of the altar say, "Even so, Lord God Almighty, true and righteous are thy judgments." So it appears to be maybe what's going on here. So we see the first, the first, second, and the third vial. And again, we can go over and look at the trumpet judgments, and these are going to be similar. But yet they was they was more diluted. They was more cut down. But here we see the full strength and the full wrath of God is being poured out upon sin and upon sinners here in the 16th chapter of Revelation. Now we want to look at the uh, want to look at the fourth vial. We looked at the third. Uh, today, now I want to look at the fourth vial. We got some scripture we're going to turn to tonight, and, and uh, we're going to see some things that I believe will help us. Uh, because something we need to know that Christ has spoken of this day. All the Old Testament prophets uh, have spoken of this, uh, these things that are going to come to pass. But notice here in verse number eight, and the fourth angel poured out his vial upon the sun, and power was given unto him to scorch men. With fire. Now, now we already know that the days have been shortened. The day, if you, the days have been shortened. The uh, the sun has been darkened. Uh, we know that by the first trumpet. Okay. Well, matter of fact, uh, Luke twenty one, the twenty first chapter of Luke, the twenty fifth verse. Let me read this to you. And there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth distress of nations and perplexity. The sea and the waves roaring. So Christ here, uh, he is speaking uh, of these days that were to come. Now you can go up in verse number 20, uh, and I don't have time to do that. I'd love to really teach, and I just noticed this. If I back up into verse number 20, we don't have time to go to it. But really we've got from when from the from verse 20 to verse 25 uh, entails over 2,000 years. Uh, I don't really have time to explain that. Oh, and I wish I did, but I don't tonight. Uh, so, but but either way, uh, well, look up in verse 24. I'll do my best to help you with it. And verse number 24, And they shall fall by the edge of the sword, and shall be led away captive in all nations. Now here he's talking about in A.D. 70, uh, when the nation of Israel was uh, was besieged or destroyed, and, and all the Jewish nation was scattered out, scattered out upon all the world. And notice here, and it goes on, And Jerusalem shall be trodden down by the Gentiles, again, A.D. 70, but, from, but these next seven or eight words entail, entail about 2,000 years of history. And you got to understand this. It says, until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. Now, what's the time of the Gentiles? That's today. The, the, it is the opportune time. Now, listen to me, folks. The day is the day of the Gentiles. It is the opportune time it, it, that we live in today to accept the gospel. That, that the gospel will be preached uh, to all people, to all nations, every kindred, every tongue. Uh, that the gospel is going to be preached to. That today is the day of salvation. Folks, for all the Gentile people. Okay, because the, again, during the tribulation, God will God will lift that blindness in part that he's given to, given to the nation of Israel. And God will go back dealing with Israel again. We know God's not done with Israel yet. Okay, the church is not Israel. The United States didn't receive the blessings of Israel. The church didn't receive the blessings. God is not done with his people yet and he will return back to them. Because that is the reason for the tribulation. If it wasn't for the nation of Israel, there would be no use for the tribulation. They'd just call the church out and be done with it. Judge Satan and it would be over. But no, the tribulation must take place for the saving of, of God's chosen people. That's the nation of Israel. And that's talking about the time of the Gentiles in which we live in now. And again, during the tribulation, he will go back to that. Let me... 
All right, Deuteronomy 32. We're going to see some more words. Uh, matter of fact, here in Deuteronomy 32 and 24 that Moses spoke of here. They shall be burnt with hunger and devoured with burning heat and with this, and, and with bitter destruction. I will also send the teeth of beasts and, uh, upon, upon them with the poison of serpents of the dust, the sword without and terror within shall destroy both the young man and the virgin, the suckling also with the man of gray hair. So Moses spoke of this time to come. Malachi, Malachi spoke of this. Malachi saw these days. Uh, Malachi chapter number one, for behold, or I'm sorry, Malachi chapter four, beginning in verse one. For behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven. You know, I want to say something, go up for on. I believe God's got his word. For, for that generation. I'm trying to think of a good way to put it. His final word for that for that generation. Maybe that's a good way to put it. I guess what I'm getting at, read the book of Malachi. Study the book of Malachi. I'm telling you, there's so much in here. And the more I look at it, very short, what, four chapters? That's it. Four chapters in the book of Malachi. But I believe it's God's word for the end of an age. And friends, we're living at the end of this age. It was, it was good then. It's good now. We see those things. We see these people, the mindset in people. Uh, and all through the book of Malachi, study. Don't just skim over it. Really sit down and study and look at the mindset at the end of the age there, that, that uh, the last book of the Old Testament uh, that we have here, the, the latest uh, book uh, written before the, coming of, right before the coming of Christ there. And really it's amazing that we what we see. And I, it's good for us today. We, we see this even with Jude. Uh, we know Jude outside of the outside of Revelation. Uh, you know, we see it in Jude again. That's that's kind of be considered outside of Revelation, the last book for here. For the New Testament, I, I don't know. It's kind of hard for me to explain, but study the Book of Malachi. Man, there's so there, there, there there's so much in here. I believe that will help you. That will really shed light on the mindset of men today. Uh, again, it was God's word for the end of that age. I believe it's God's word for the end of our age. And uh, it's good stuff. But look in verse number, uh, chapter 4 and verse 1. For behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven. And all the proud, yea, all that do wickedly shall be stubble. And the day that cometh shall burn them up, saith the Lord of hosts, that it shall leave them neither root nor branch. But unto you that fear my name shall the Son of Righteousness arise with healing in his wings, and you shall go forth and grow up as calves of the stone. Now, what's he talking about here? He's, well, verse number one, he's in the tribulation. Verse number two, he's come all the way down to the millennial kingdom. But unto you that fear my name shall the son of righteousness, when, they, when all this is over, it's saying, they, it's like a new day is dawning. That, 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 that day of tribulation, the day of the wrath of God has gone away. And now in verse number two, that millennial kingdom is coming. But unto you that fear my name shall the Son of Righteousness arise with healing in his wings, and ye shall go forth and grow up as calves of the stall. In other words, those calves that are in the stall protected. They're fed. They're protected. They're out of the they're out of the elements. All those things, they're being taken care of. And ye shall be in verse number three, and ye shall tread down the wicked, talking about the end of the tribulation. See, there's a thousand years between verses two and verse three. Uh, folks, you gotta watch that stuff now. There's a lot of time, a lot of uh, a lot of time goes between some verses. Uh, in verse number three, and ye shall tread down the wicked, for they shall be ashes under the soles of your feet. In the day that I shall do this, saith the Lord of hosts. And um, so there's a lot to uh, look there. Again, Matthew chapter number 24, uh, in verse number 22. We're not going to make it very far today, are we? That's all right. Uh, Matthew chapter 24, in verse number 22. Now, Christ spoken of this again. Okay, now we know that the days have already been shortened. Okay, why? Because of what Christ said here. Revelation, I think the eighth chapter. When, where was it at? I got to turn over here. Revelation chapter number eight and verse number 12. And the fourth angel sounded. And the third part of the sun was smitten, and the third part of the moon, and the third part of the stars, so that a third part of them was darkened. And the day shone not for a third part of it, and the night likewise. So we know the days have been shortened here. The darkness falls quicker. Uh, in other words, the sun sets quicker. Uh, or maybe it doesn't set. Maybe it's just because of the, 
uh, the, the ash and those things in the air that's darkening as the sun, as we think the sun is set, but yet as, you know, as it sets, it gets farther away as it, set, as it sets, and maybe it's just not able to penetrate uh, through, uh, through the ash, through all the things, of the fires that's burning, all these things that's going on. I'm telling you, it's going to be some horrible times, folks. But in verse, uh, where, was, where was we at? Uh, been lost my place. Uh, verse 22, and except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. And I believe that's what he's talking about here. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. So we see here, God's wrath is being poured, being poured out uh, without diluted, without being diluted. And God said, if it wasn't for the elect, those that's been born again, those that's been saved during the tribulation, uh, all flesh, no one could stand it. But look in verse number, and I'm not going to get very far, am I? Look in verse number eight. And the fourth angel poured out his vial upon the sun, and power was given unto him to scorch men with fire. And so, so what's taking place here? Well, again, all this is supernatural, but yet, well, well, let's go on. Uh, let's go on. We need to finish up. Uh, I've got, I believe, a lot more that we could say about that, what the things that we're seeing today. Um, but either way, let's go on. Uh, verse number nine. And men were scorched with great heat. But yet, what did they do? Now, think about this. What did they do? Did they get right with God? Did they repent? Did they say, Lord, forgive me of my sins and my mistakes? And Lord, I believe and I trust in you. Oh, no. No, they shook their fist. In the hand of the very God that controlled their judgments. Look in verse 9. And men were scorched with great heat and blasphemed the name of God. You know, this is a proof that uh, men's hearts cannot be changed outside of Christ. We're talking the very judgment of God. And they know this. I believe people in this time will have a clear understanding of what they're doing. And who is sending this judgment. Who, who is doing these things. And the men were scorched with great heat and blasphemed the name of God. Which hath power over these plagues. You see they know it. They know the very judgment that they're getting is coming from the God of heaven. By their choices but are still unwilling. Unwilling to repent. Men has got pride in their own desires of being able to want it their way, do it their way, have it their way. It has taken over man. He says, has power of these plagues, and they repented not to give him glory. To give him glory, what's he talking about there? I believe he's talking about when he talks about to give him glory. They know what they're doing. See, the angels, again, folks, listen, listen. These are very supernatural times. And from what the scripture says, and I, I believe in, you know, I've told people here at uh, Pleasant Home, be strict with your scripture. If it says it, believe it. Don't go no farther than that and don't take away from it. Okay? But angels, the scripture says that there will be angels flying around in the sky. Preaching the gospel to mankind. Folks, this is supernatural, supernatural times. And yet men choose to follow them on selves, follow their own way. There's a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof is death. And even though all this is going on, not the preacher from the pulpit no more. Not the, not the Baptist preacher down here in rural America. Not the hidden church, the underground church in China no more. Not the missionary in Oklahoma or in Australia preaching the gospel. Oh no. These are God's own messengers. God's own created angels. Flying in the heavens, teaching and preaching the word of God 
and the commandments and God's will. And men are still, you know, we, us preachers, is tough on ourselves. We worry about those that are getting, or those that are not getting saved, those are rejecting the gospel. And I think that's natural. But here, God's own angels is preaching and teaching the gospel, and yet men are still denying, still chasing after their own wants, their own desires. But all these things is as they. As we see that men is not willing to turn. Folks just know that there could be no clearer picture. And no clearer sign that men's hearts. Cannot be cured. Outside of Christ. So I'm going to stop there today. We'll pick up in verse 10 next week. But as I do that. And maybe. Maybe you've never. Accepted Christ. As your Lord and Savior. Maybe you. In the situation that you're in. Right now. That if Christ was to come. You see there's a way around this. There's a way around this judgment. There's a way out. Maybe I shouldn't say around. But there's a way out. Of this judgment to come. And that's trust in Christ. As your Savior. I pray you've done that. I pray that you have a. You have a religion in Christ. That changed it. Not just said a few words. And got wet in a baptism. But something that has changed you. It's made you a new creature. All that old life has passed away. And you got a new life. You got a new way of thinking. You got a new attitude. You got new actions. Friend, if you didn't get that, you didn't get Christ. Could you pray a prayer today? Could you know that you're going to miss it? Because listen, you can know that you missed this. You can do it through Christ if you'll trust Him today as your Lord and Savior. Could you do that now? Bay your head and pray a prayer or something similar to this. Lord, I love you. I trust you. I'm going to do what your word says and how this preacher says today. I'm going to trust you as my Lord and Savior. I'm going to serve you all the days of my life. All I've got is my faith to come to you. Lord, I don't want to have to go through judgment. I understand there's a judgment for my life. But it's been judged on Calvary for those that will accept it. Lord, I trust you today and I trust your son. That he paid for all of my sin. As he hung on Calvary. And he, as he arose from that grave. As that tomb was found empty. I claim that victory today in Christ. God make me a new person. Make me a new creature. God help me to put, out, put away this old life. By faith. Or I bring nothing to the table. There's nothing good in me. But by faith I accept you today. And I accept your son as payment for my sin. Now thank him. You may have to pray it twice, three, four times, but you keep praying it until there's a change. And God said he'd save you. If you've trusted him, if you prayed that prayer and you've trusted him by faith with all your heart, friend, find you a church that'll preach the gospel. I love you. I'm pastor here at Place on Baptist Church. You're welcome here anytime. We'd love to see you. I hope this will be over very quickly. This coronavirus will. Let's pray for our nation as we leave today. As we walk away from the screen. Let's pray for our nation, our country, and its leaders. Let's pray for one another. Let's pray for me. Father, I just want to say I love you. God, you good to us. God, I pray, Lord, uh, Lord, your word. I know it won't return void. I know it will do that, that it's set forth to do. Now, Father, I pray, God, that you would... Make a way, God, for this teaching, Lord, to land upon the ears, God, of those that are lost. And God, that they might be saved. Lord, may they realize there's a way out of this. God, there's a better life, Lord, that you'll give us. Through Christ, if we'll just trust in him. 
Lord, we thank you for your teaching today. We thank you for your word. We just want to say we love you. Keep us safe as we go. Bless our nation and our leaders. We ask all this in Christ's name. And do it for Christ's sake. Amen and amen. I'll see you Sunday.